And God is at work in our lives. Maybe. God, in all of the mess, God has been at work. God's been there. He, he has been in all of this. Every failure, every lie, every deception, every good thing that happened, God was there. He was in the prison with Joseph. He was in the, the mourning that Jacob went through when he thought Joseph was dead. He was there all the time because of the seed project, of the thing that God was doing. And when I say that that story is our story, I'm telling you, this is why we're here today. It's this, it's this amazing thing that God is doing in and through the body of Christ. We get to be part of the seed project and what God is trying to do. And God is at work in our lives. Maybe. You can't really say that for everyone. I want to be very careful how I say what I'm about to say because I don't want to dissuade anyone from spiritual growth here. But there is one thing that can stop you from experiencing the God is with you thing in your life. The idea that there's a a vision and a mission that God has for our lives. There's a purpose for our lives. There's one thing that could stop that. And that is, if you decide that God is not going to be first in your life. You say, Greg, what, what does that mean? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things will be added to you. All of them. You'll get this. You'll be part of the the seed project. You'll be part of the movement. You'll be part of what God is doing. But if you simply relegate God to a religious moment or a prayer that was prayed 20 years ago, or he doesn't factor in except when you really need him bad and dear God help, you know, which those are valid prayers if, if, if it's part of your life. But if he is just a fixture to be used, you will not get to experience the power and the ultimate joy of God being with you in the middle of dark times.